Welcome back to support reactions. In the previous video we discussed the different kind of supports and in this video we are going to see the different kind of loads and the effect of those loads on the supports. What you have here is a load of 10 kN acting at um, say on a beam of 10 meter length and uh, the load is acting at the mid span of the beam at 5 meter from either supports. So we need to find the reactions at A and B. Um, we know from the uh, condition of equilibrium, uh, the, the, for the equilibrium of this beam, you should have uh, uh, satisfied three equations, forces in X direction and forces in Y direction along with total moments should be zero. So we know uh, this is a condition for the equilibrium of this force system. And let's see how we can solve this problem here. So you have three equations to solve and you need to find two reactions. So if you consider the moment equation, you can apply that in here and then taking moment of the force system about the point A, you have, again, while taking the moment about any point, go to the basics and think what we discussed in the previous videos. To find any force, to find the moment of any force, what you need to do is extend the line of action and then find the perpendicular distance between the center of the moment and the line of action of the force. So that's a parallel, um, you need to draw a parallel line through the moment center. So when you take the moment about A, there are three forces, a reaction at A, reaction at B and a 10 kN force. So all these forces, even though these are reactions, we need to, we need to consider these three forces when taking moment about A. So first considering the force or the reaction at A, to take moment about A, you need to extend the line of action of the force and then draw a parallel line through the moment center and then you can see the two lines will coincide and therefore there is no perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the line you drawn parallel to that line through the moment center. So two lines superimpose and therefore there is no perpendicular distance and therefore the moment will be Ra into zero or that moment will be zero for this force. And then you have 10 kN. To find the moment of 10 kN, extend the line of action of the force, draw a line parallel to that force through the moment center and then find the perpendicular distance. And you can see that is five meter. And because 10 kN is acting downwards, the, the nature of moment or the sign of moment about A will be a clockwise. So, so this force is tempting the body to rotate in the clockwise direction. So the moment will be negative. We discussed before as a convention, clockwise moment will be negatives and anti-clockwise moments will be positive. So in the moment equation, you have a minus 10 into five. This is the distance of the force to the moment center. So this is five meter. And then you have one more force that is RB. And from this figure, you can see RB is creating a counterclockwise moment about the point A. So if you, if, you, uh, if you just consider the reaction RB and this point here, then this RB will be pushing the beam upwards or rotating the beam in this direction. So that will be a counterclockwise moment. And therefore, RB, the moment of RB about A will be positive. So you have plus RB into the distance is 10 meter. Again, extend the line of action, draw a parallel line through the moment center, find the distance between these two and that is 10 meter. So you have total moment equation minus 10 into 5, that is the moment of this force, plus RB into 10, that is the moment of the reaction at B will be equal to zero. You have no moment for RA about A because RA is passing through the point A. Now you have RB equal to 50 divided by 10 or 5 kN. You have one more equation or two equations and because there is no horizontal forces, you don't need to consider summation Fx equal to zero. That equation is not of use here because there is no horizontal forces. So for vertical equilibrium, you have summation of forces in y direction is equal to zero. And for that condition, you should have an equality between the sum of these two forces and 10 kN or all the forces acting in the upward direction should be equal to the forces in the downward direction.
So Ra plus Rb should be equal to 10 kilonewton. And you know Rb is 5 kilonewton. Therefore, Ra will be 10 minus Rb that is 5 kilonewton again. And from this figure, you can see this is a case of symmetry where the force is acting at the mid span of the beam. And the force is acting vertically downward. The reactions are vertically upward. In this particular case, if a force is acting vertically downward at the mid span of a beam, which is supported on simple supports, then the force will be equally distributed at the reactions or the reactions will be half of the force. This will be possible only if the force is acting vertically downward and this is the beam is simply supported and one more condition that the force should act at the mid span of the beam. If these three conditions are satisfied then the reactions will be half of the force or the force will be equally distributed at these two reactions. So you have Ra and Rb equal to 5 kN. Once again this condition will be only applicable if three conditions one the force should be acting vertically downward if the force is inclined then this condition will not be applicable so for the, the reactions to be half of the force you you need to have a force vertically acting downward on the mid span of a beam that is the second condition and again the beam should be simply supported if you have a roller bearing here or an inclined support here then it will be invalid so the force should be vertically downward at the mid span of the beam and the beam should be supported on simple support so if that is the case then the force will be equally distributed at these two reactions now moving on um, we have a different case here where you have a uniformly distributed load this this kind of loading is called a, a uniformly distributed load otherwise udl this is th this kind of loading is called a udl uh, i forgot to mention that uh, this load is called a point load you can call it as a point load or you can see the load is actually acting at a point at a point here but in this case this is distributed uniformly distributed you can see the notation of the uh, the load says 10 kilonewton per meter so in every meter there is a 10 kilonewton load so that is the case here and that kind of loading is called a un uniformly distributed load so you have 10 kilonewton per meter acting over a span of 10 meter and the beam is supported at a and b so on a simple supports so you have a reaction at A and B. Now, we can convert the system to a simple support and a point load. Let's see how we can do that. You can also mention, uh, you can also draw a simple support like this. These are the two methods of drawing a simple support, uh, sorry, a u uniformly distributed load. Either you can show like a spring or you can you can show like this even this is um th th there will be a line on on top of this uh like um i'll just show you i'll just draw a line here there will be a line here as well uh, just above the above the load uh, to mention that it's a simple support so this is how uh, a uniformly distributed loads are shown so you have a 10 kilonewton per meter over a 10 meter length so the total load of this force system will be the intensity of the load into the total length. So you have 10 kilonewton per meter over 10 meter. So total load will be 10 kilonewton into 10 that is 100 kilonewton. And we can convert this to an equivalent system like this. So if you find the total force of this load, we can assume for the purpose of finding reactions we can assume that this load is acting at the mid span over which the udl is acting so if the udl is acting over 10 meter then you can assume the effective load of this udl system is acting at 5 meter or the mid span of this loading system don't confuse uh, it is not acting at the mid span of the beam but it is acting at the mid span of the load. So if the load is only 
5 meter or say 6 meter on the beam then the load will be acting at 3 meter from here so we will see uh, examples later on the equivalent load or the net load of this uniformly distributed load system will be acting at the mid span of the length over which the load is acting don't confuse it is not the length of the beam it is the half of the length over which the load is acting so here you have the load acting over 10 meter 10 meter so the udl will be at the mid span of the point of the of the load system so that will be acting at 5 meter and the total load will be 10 into 10 that is 100 kilo newton so you have a 100 kilo newton force acting at say 5 meter so now you have the system is same as before the system is same as in the case here it's a 10 kilo newton and now you have a 100 kilo newton force but everything else remains the same you have ra and rb and you have a force acting at the mid span so now you know the ra and rb will be a half of the force so because your conditions are all met satisfied you have a force vertically acting downward at the mid span of the beam and the reactions are simple supports so you have ra equal to rb equal to 50 kilo newton you can just double check here you have summation of moment equal to zero and that will be minus 100 into 5 plus rb into 10 equal to zero so rb equal to 500 divided by 10 that is 50 kilo newton and the next condition will be summation of forces in y direction equal to zero that is ra plus rb equal to 100 kilo newton and that will be applied and you have rb equal to 50 so ra equal to 100 minus 50 that is again 50 kilo newton so again the forces are uh, force is uh, equally distributed at the reactions now you have a, a different case here um, with the uniformly varying load we will discuss it in the next video